Assalamu alaikum. This is lecture eight on discrete control system. We are discussing chapter three, the Z transform analysis of discrete time control systems. Okay, so this is the beginning, the first class of uh, this chapter. And uh, we are going to basically today covering uh, the topic impulse sampling and the data hold. So uh, before going to the actual topic, uh, let us discuss some of the applications of the Z transform analysis. Uh, so, or the, you can also call the usefulness of the Z transformation. First of all, uh, basically the uh, analysis and the design of single input, single output, linear time and variant discrete time control system can be done using the Z transformation. And uh, the required basics or background materials for the design and the analysis of the design are actually will be covered in this chapter. And the main advantage of the Z transform method is it enables the engineers to apply conventional uh, continuous time design methods to the discrete time uh, system. So basically, uh, whatever we have learned uh, prior to this course, that is uh, continuous time method, say that uh, root locus, root locus, then you have frequency domain techniques, So in the frequency domain techniques, uh, both plot, night place, so uh, these kind of things are there. So these classical methods that we have learned so far, the transformation actually allows us to use this uh, thing into your discrete time control system. Okay, so uh, and uh, by discrete time control system, it can be partially or partially discrete, or partly discrete, or partly discrete, or it can be uh, fully discrete. Okay. So mainly partly discrete part will be discussed in there. Okay, so partly discrete and partly continuous. So before going to the actual discussion of your impulse sampling and the data hold, a few assumptions we need to uh, mention. And the first one is, the sampling operation is in uniform. That is only one sampling rate is exist in the system and the sampling period is constant. So this is always T, uh, this is a uh, constant, constant uh, throughout the entire system. So in case we have uh, more than one or two or more samplers, so more two or more sampler we have, in that case, all of them are assumed to have same rate T and they're synchronized as well. So these are the two uh, assumptions we are making for simplicity of calculation. Now let's go dive into the actual topic that is impulse sampling and data hold. Actually, the understanding of this impulse sample and the data hole will be useful in analysis and the design of the digital control system. So let's start with the impulse sampling. What does it mean? So okay, so the impulse sampler is considered uh, as the name suggests. Uh, is a fictitious uh, uh, sampler. It is not real. It is just a mathematical concept. And the output of the sampler is considered to be a train of pulse. Okay, so as uh, whatever we have our uh, conventional, uh, conventional sampler, what it does, it also does a similar thing. So uh, it will uh, say, we give a pulse, something like this, say starting from here. This is something we have our system. Okay, so if you get drive it through that impulse sampler, an arrow should be here indicating the impulse uh, sampler or the T 
theoretical sampler, fictitious sampler. Uh, then uh, it will give you uh, whatever the signal we had uh, that corresponding uh, pulses will be provided with a specific period. So it's a T1, T, twice T, twice T, 40. So this kind of thing we are going to get. Okay, so starting from time T equal to zero. As you already said, in most of the cases, we assume that any values before time T equal to zero is non-existent. Okay, so at T equal to, uh, from this one, what do you know that uh, this is maybe your T twice T, twice T, 40, so it goes on. So since we have a uniform time T and impulse sampler is denoted by del T. So if you have XT, which is a continuous time signal, on the outside you have X star T, X star T is a notation for your impulse sampler. So in the time domain we present in this way or in the frequency domain, we present the excess is being uh, sampled with X star S. Okay, so and also we have to assume that uh, XT is, uh, it doesn't have any value if it equal to zero. So XT uh, is zero for T uh, lesser than zero. So these are all assumptions. Okay, and also uh, whether you have noticed or not, there are a few arrows and these arrows uh, of each sample, and these arrows means actually the impulse uh, a theoretically it should go, the strength should be the infinity. That is why the arrow is uh, going towards uh, indicating that. Because impulse by definition should have a zero uh, width and infinite length. So from that concept, we are assuming that they are going towards that peak. That is why the arrow is big given, but eventually it is actually related to this control signal or about the magnitude at that particular time, that particular time when you're going to get that uh, signal strength. So, so far, what you have uh, understood is uh, that uh, at t equal to kt, what we're going to uh, get is the uh, impulse will be x kt. So the signal strength at uh, time kt with a, a impulse at that particular time, delayed time. So this is how you can find it. So if k x equal to zero, then it is t minus, uh, uh, it will be actually, at zero uh, del t. So this is the first one uh, at zero, zero at, uh, zero at time what we have. And the next one, what you're going to get is xt, then del t minus one time delay of your impulse. So this is how it will continue. So at t equal to kt, well, this is what you're going to get. And we always have to keep in mind by definition, uh, what we have is uh, del t minus kt equal to zero uh, or if t uh, is not equal to kt. So except t equal to kt, everywhere else, this is zero. So that is why we are going to get infinite, a train of impulse sample out of a continuous signal out of this uh, sample. And as you said, the notation is in the time given x uh, dot x star t or in the frequency domain x star t. Okay, so what you find, what is actually X star T, summation of all the signals. So we can write X star T as uh, a summation of K equal to zero to infinity, uh, X uh, KT, del T minus KT. So if you write uh, the, as a series, so X zero del T, plus uh, x uh, t del t minus t plus goes on up to uh, x k t del t minus k t. Also, uh, you can prolong up to infinity. Now, uh, we, we define the train of pulses as the, this uh, train of pulse then you have impulse, uh, unit impulses as, uh, let me write. Okay, so we define it as a del uh, T, T, that is uh, the value of your impulse. Uh, sampler. So 
what we are defining is delta T is equal to the infinite series k equal to zero to infinity of del T minus k T. Okay, so this is the definition. Now the samplers, uh, their output, the sampler output is equal to the product of that two signals. So basically a continuous time signal xt and xkt and also a train of pulses that is delta. So which can be uh, basically what we're talking about is this one. So a continuous time signal, also a, a train of pulses. So you can just separate this one in this way, xkt. Since uh, xkt is nothing but the magnitude at that particular point, so we can write train of pulses in this way as well. So uh, as uh, we already defined, this is nothing but your uh, del T T. Okay, so now uh, uh, this particular uh, sampler operation can be con considered as uh, this uh, system with a, uh, say our system is a modulator. Okay, so we have a carrier uh, uh, signal from the uh, telecommunication background. We can say that we have a carrier, a high frequency carrier. Then we have a, a modulating signal, which is our the actual information. And in this case, I will call that XT as our uh, modulating signal. Okay, and carrier is our del uh, TT. And eventually, and based on uh, the uh, modulation, we can get our uh, sample strength. Okay, so something like this. Okay, so this system of uh, whatever we are discussing, the impulse sampler, it can be considered as a system like a modulator and the carrier signal is your the train of pulses and the modulating signal is our input. And the output that we're getting is basically x star d. So input, and this is also our output. So we can write again uh, for, uh, before uh, going to the Laplace transformation, let us write the equation again, x star t is basically x0 uh, del t plus xt del t minus t. So basically delayed version of your impulses and it goes up to xk and beyond. Okay, so now take the Laplace transformation of this one. Laplace transformation yields x star s okay so since x this one this one this one is nothing but the magnitudes of that particular analog signal or continuous time signal so basically uh, they are not function of the time so uh, they are just uh, constant so you can write in this way x0 Laplace transformation of your del T uh, plus uh, XT and Laplace transformation of del T minus T and goes on up to uh, XKT that way, XKT, uh, Laplace transformation of del T minus KT. And yeah, so now uh, we know that uh, Laplace transformation of is to one. And because of the delay, we have to have the delay operator. So what we're going to get is X0 first one because uh, Laplace transformation this is magnitude one. So that one is uh, magnitude one with the delay. Delay is basically into the power, whatever the delay into TS. So plus XT into the power minus Ts, one delay. And the next one, x uh, twice t into the power minus twice 
P. So it goes up to x k t uh, into the power minus uh, k t s. So in a summation, we can write in this way k equal to zero to infinity uh, x k t uh, into the power minus k t s. Now, if you observe very carefully, then actually based on this, uh, from this one, you can actually find out about Z transformation. We know that for the Z transformation, we have to have Z to the power minus K. So somehow from this one, if we can assume that uh, from comparing these two, that Z equal to E to the power, uh, Ps, and then we can say that this equation can become a k equal to zero to infinity x kt z to the power minus k. Okay, so this one can give us basically, uh, if we can take the long, then uh, s is basically. 1 by t long z. Okay, so if you replace inside that s, s is being replaced with that particular condition with that uh, your s equal to 1 by t long z or x star, you just replace that s with 1 by t long z and then it gives you uh, k equal to summation of k equal to zero to infinity x uh, kt z to the power minus k. Eventually, this is nothing but your z. So, as you can see, that in a special case of the Laplace transformation uh, with the condition that your s equal to 1 by t long z is actually gives us the z transformation. Okay, so. Uh, this is an uh, outcome that will be really helpful in the future because we are very familiar with uh, the Laplace transformation. So if you can take the advantage of the Laplace transformation, that would be really great. Okay, so what is the final outcome of this impulse sampler, sampler is this. Impulse sampler is introduced for mathematical convenience. So this is one thing. And for second thing is, uh, this is not real, this is fictitious, and uh, it can be uh, used wherever necessary because of uh, your representation. So this is one, uh, this is the final uh, thing from your impulse sampler. So impulse sampler uh, will give us a transformation with the condition that our S is uh, having a condition of one by T bones. Now let's go into the data hold circuits. Okay, so what is uh, data hold? We know that uh, uh, from the computer we have, uh, we receive the trainer pulses again, but we cannot drive our plant with the trainer pulse. So we have to have some mechanism to convert that uh, train of pulses into a continuous time signal. So uh, the data hold is basically a process of generating that continuous time signal. So the definition is a process of generating continuous time signal, say HT from a discrete sequence, from a discrete sequence. That is obtained from your computer, so maybe XKT. So if we have the sequence, you want to drive the plant with a continuous time signal. So the data hold is the, basically the process of generating that continuous time signal based on that discrete sequence. So 
uh, now we have to actually adopt some mechanism to uh, convert this uh, sample signal into continuous time signal. So in general, using a polynomial equation, it has been done. So the signal uh, in between the samples, how to define that. So basically you say in one sample, we have value like this in the next sample, the next sample. So in between the samples, how to define. So a simple one is just uh, holding the values up to the next uh, one, then again, up to the next one. So this, this can be a simple uh, technique. So this is what is also known as a zero order form. So uh, bottom line is we don't know what is happening in between. And also there is a possibility that two separate signal which are not identical may have the same sample. So if you, this is your sample rate, so that means the sinusoidal signal as well as that step signal, they will give you same pulses. So it is difficult to retrieve the actual signal. So that is why uh, in between the two samples, a polynomial is generally used to represent uh, the, uh, to reproduce the continuous time signal. So that is H uh, KT. KT is uh, from the KT sample to the next sample that is K uh, plus one T. How can we figure out? So equal to A N tau n nth order polynomial is just a general equation, but as we are going to see that we, we don't use much of the terms, so rather we just take n equal to zero and one in most of the cases. And goes on to a one tau plus a zero. Okay, so this is a polynomial and how it is applicable. Why, where it is applicable to find out uh, the signal H T uh, in between yeah, or in the range, you should rather say in the range uh, K T or the current sample to the next sample that is K plus one T. Okay, so we have to predict what is happening in between the two pulses, how they are actually moving from one to another. Okay, so and this polynomial for this polynomial, the tau that we have used is uh, is bounded by this condition. And definitely, the tau has to be smaller than the period; otherwise, uh, we cannot assume the value in between. So, at current uh, value, that is H K T, is uh, definitely our current signal strength X X K T. So, this is what we can assume. So, we can just rewrite this equation in terms of that. So current values, A n tau n plus A n minus one tau n minus one going into A one tau and the current value, oh, this is actually your A zero. So the first value, uh, x k t. Okay, so now uh, what should be the suitable value for your n? So higher the value of n, more precisely you can predict the system behavior. But what is the trade-off? There is always a trade-off, isn't it? So the trade-off is higher the values of uh, n, better approximation, but, but it, will, it will take more uh, values to process, more previous values to process the current uh, value. And that is why uh, it will take more time. Uh, so the delay will be greater. So higher the delay, and the system will go towards the instability because of that uh, delay that is being incorporated. So that is why in most cases, we're going to see that n equal to zero or hardly, rarely equal to one is also used, but no other values other than that. So basically, even though you're writing a uh, equation, complicated equation like that with n polynomial, but we generally use uh, uh, these are the two factors. Okay, so okay, so now uh, let us focus uh, on. Uh, okay, by the, by, by the way, it is also called n nth order x uh, extrapolator. So nth order extrapolator. Even though we are not going to use higher uh, order. But so if n equal to zero, then it is called zero order hold. If n equal to one, then it is called first order hold. 
if n equal to two, then it is called second order order. So this is how it has been defined. Okay, so uh, according to me, so if n equal to zero, only one value is uh, previous one value is record. If n equal to two, n equal to zero, only one value that is x k d is required. If is n equal to one, then two value is required. That is x k uh, t and the uh, next value x uh, uh, a one uh, tau. So as n equal to two. Then it takes three values x, kt, then a1 tau plus a2 tau square. So this is how uh, they are going to change. So one more value than the order uh, is going to take. So as I said, higher the order, more approximate uh, the uh, reconstruction will be, but it will introduce more delay or greater time delay, and hence the system may go towards the instability. And in worst case, the system will become uh, unstable. So that is why it is always preferred. And in most cases, uh, this is another assumption is that if it is not mentioned, we always assume that it is uh, equal to zero or it is actually zero order hold. Okay. So this is by default. And else, uh, except that we, uh, I explicitly mentioned that use the first order of work, but uh, that is also real. So uh, for the first order hold, basically uh, the equation is simple. X uh, K T plus tau is basically the parsed value. That is uh, whatever the current value, it will continue up to the next one. It will, whatever the current value, it will continue up to the next one. So next one is even higher maybe. Okay, so it will continue up to the next one. So next one maybe this well. So you come back here. And so this is how it will continue. Uh, so basically holding the current value up to the next value. Okay, so this is how it works. So now let us go into the mathematical detail of it. Uh, okay, so. Uh, uh, definitely the conditions that you should mention is uh, this. Uh, we already know that as well as and k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 goes up to infinity. So there's the circuit. The circuit holds the amplitude of the sample from one sample to the instant to the next. Uh, There's a definition that I'm just uh, uh, rephrasing. Such a whole circuit is also called zero order hold or clamper or staircase generator. So other names it will be better to recall. So zero order hold, zero order hold, or clamper, or staircase generator. So these are the other names of the zero order hold. And now let us uh, uh, let us go into the derivation of the zero order hold. So the transfer function of the zero order hold is given as h is equal to a g of h g of h equal to one minus h to the power minus t s by s. So this is the transfer function of the zero order hold. Let us now try to prove this one. So we have a real sampler. So first of all, we have a real system uh, with x uh, t, and the, sam the sample version of it is x k t, and then we have a zero order hold circuit. Okay, and the output that we are getting is h one k. And the T is mentioned. Now, we can also have uh, our uh, fictitious sampler or uh, impulse sampler in place. So since we know that our, we are actually following whatever the current value, we're keeping that value constant up to the next value, whatever it is coming. And then we are keeping it again constant up to the next value, whatever it is coming. Okay, so what we can see from here that 
throughout the period, basically the value is constant and a value, constant value is obtained from the integrator. So from that idea is basically, you can assume that zero order hold is also an integrator and the input of the zero order hold is that train of pulses that we are getting. So if you integrate those train of pulses, then actually we can have our constant values like this uh, example. So from that idea, we can actually assume that we can have a uh, uh, impulse sampler, the arrow indicates the impulse sampler with delta, of course. And then you can have uh, your X uh, T, uh, basically it was T as well. So, and um, you have your X uh, start. Okay, so, and then your transfer function uh, of your zero order hold is zero. So you can also give a zero here to keep it consistent. So now if you get that one, then that one should also give you a similar result with H2 uh, T. You can also represent the whole thing in terms of Laplace domain that is X uh, S, then X star S because we see that X star S eventually will help us to uh, find out our Z transformation. Okay, so this is your X2S. Okay, now, uh, since we, by definition, by looking at the property of the zero or the sampler, we can assume that we can just simply replace our real sampler with the impulse sampler and eventually they will give the same result. So from this idea, we can actually find out what will be our uh, F equation of H1, the real one, the H1 T will be X0, the 0th instant value. And that will continue from 1T to, 1T is a step signal to 1 uh, T minus T. Okay, so what, what does it mean? So it means, that so uh, from the continuous time signal, this is your continuous time signal at any particular instant, you have this magnitude. So this is your x0, and this value will continue for the next period. Okay, so uh, at this point, what is your step signal? So 1t, 1t is basically a signal that will continue from that instant and it will go up to that one. But what we need is from one uh, period, one T to the next T, but not more than that. So next T is basically one T minus T. So if you subtract from one T to one T minus T, so basically you are subtracting from this whole thing, this thing. So this one is canceled. Now you just have this particular sample. Similarly, for the next instant, see the magnitude is this, and magnitude is that. So we actually have to subtract from 1t to actually 1t minus twice t will be subtracted. So in this way, you're figuring out this one, then the, maybe the next sample. So this is how it is. And with the magnitude definitely the next one, which is xt. So as we have seen that next one will be plus xt, the magnitude of the uh, analog signal with uh, the unit sample from one t minus t to the next one that is one t minus twice t. And this thing will continue. So uh, in a summation form, we can write x k equal to zero to infinity. That is x k t at particular value x k t. It will continue from that particular time is 10 delay so that is one T minus KT to next one. That is one uh, T minus K plus one T. So this is how uh, we have to represent it. Okay, so now uh, let us see how to find out uh, the a delay, I had to find out the corresponding uh, Laplace transformation. So we are actually interested about the Laplace transformation of this portion first. 
Okay, so as you can see, this one is a delayed version of uh, your step signal. So we know that step signal uh, Laplace transformation is one by s, and the delay is e to the power minus uh, k t s. K t is the delay, so with that we have the s upright. So this is a, similarly, this one can also be represented as one by s e to the power minus k plus one t s. So now let us uh, write the corresponding Laplace transformation. So uh, H1S is going to be the Laplace transformation of H1T. And that is uh, your summation of K equal to zero to infinity. And X, XKT is simply the magnitude, so it's not going uh, under the Laplace transformation. Okay, so we have one T minus KT minus one T minus K plus one T. Okay, so now uh, summation of K equal to zero to infinity x k t, we already defined what will be the corresponding Laplace transformation. So it is e to the power minus k t s by s plus e to the power, uh, sorry, minus uh, e to the power minus uh, k plus one t s by s. So you can just simplify this one. You can just take common of this, and also you can just simplify this one with e to the power minus k t s and e to the power minus t s. So uh, let us further uh, simplify the thing. X k t taking common of s e to the power minus k t s minus e to the power minus k t s into e to the power Yes, so a bit uh, more simplification will uh, give us uh, S e to the power K T S minus, of course, one minus e to the power minus T S. So what we can do here is we can take uh, one minus e to the minus T S by S to the form, then you can have your summation of K equal to zero to infinity uh, x uh, kt i uh, to the power minus kts. Okay, so as we already have uh, defined, I have seen that this is nothing but the z transformation in condition given that s equal to one by t uh, long z. Okay, so this is our h of h1s. So since uh, your system one and two, that is the actual uh, sampler and the system with the impulse sampler are same, so we can say that Laplace transformation of your h2t, uh, h2t will be actually h2s and that will be same as your h1s. And hence, we can say that H2S is basically one minus e to the power minus Ts by S with the summation k equal to zero to infinity uh, x uh, kt e to the power minus kts. Okay, so, and, uh, and what is uh, this one? We already have seen, this is nothing but our form, our experience of the impulse sampler in the, of the last topic, this is actually your X star S, which can be also said as XZ if your S is one by T one Z. Okay. So uh, we can be simply just writing this way, one minus the minus T S Y S into X S star S equal to your H two S. So basically output by input, I use basically your transfer function. So H2S by input is X star S is your one by uh, I to the minus TS by S. 
and you can call this one as your G H zero zero stands for zero order hold transfer function. So this is the derivative derivation of your zero order hold. Okay, so now uh, what is our outcome or what is our uh, uh, conclusion from this? First of all, uh, real sampler can be actually replaced by an impulse sampler. So a real sampler, a sampler the, uh, the arrow is not here and this is a real sampler. And a, a fictitious or impulse sampler is this one with the arrow, and this is represented by T. This is your impulse sampler. And this is your delta with the arrow. Okay, so this is one thing. And the impulse sampler can be used with the transfer function that just we have derived, that is uh, V1 minus E to the power minus Ts by S. So in some cases, we're going to use that one. And as we said, that our assumption is in most of the cases, we're going to eventually use the zero order hold, unless otherwise it is mentioned. But uh, just for uh, curiosity or for a better understanding, also we'll try to derive the transfer function of the first order hold. So transfer function of the first order hold Okay, so let's write the equation for us, GH1. So we say one stands for the first order hold is one minus it is one minus Ts by S. Uh, we have Ts plus one by T. Okay, so how to derive this one? Uh, that is, uh, uh, looks a bit complicated. And uh, if, uh, let me just check whether I have correctly written the transfer function or not. Actually, yeah, that should be a squared term. Yes. So this is your uh, transfer function. So uh, from the polynomial equation, H uh, K T plus tau, equal to a n tau n plus a n minus one tau n minus one goes on by a one tau plus x k t. x k t is the current uh, value of the center. And this one has to be the next center, basically. Okay, so in between how we are actually plotting, this is what we are trying to figure out. So for the, Say uh, zero at order hold, we actually use only one value. Now we're going to take two values. So eventually our equation will be based on this one. So since n equal to one, we need two values and h uh, kt minus tau, kt plus tau will be k1 tau plus uh, h kt. And we should also, uh, Mention the condition sidewise, uh, tau is, has to be lesser than t, and also k equal to zero, one, two goes on. And uh, by applying also, we have a condition, we know that the next sample that is uh, uh, h uh, k minus one t has to be actually h uh, k minus one t as well, because Next, uh, uh, whatever we are, whatever we are predicting, uh, it will continue up to the next value. But whenever we are next taking the next sample, values we actually have to start from the next sample. So from this one, uh, from this idea, uh, the definition, we can also from the slope equation, we can also find out what will be the value of a. So the value of the a can be figured out as as a slope from the current sample value to the next sample value uh, and the time period in between. 
And based on that, we can actually find out on the equation that we have hk minus one t integral minus a one t plus x uh, k t, which eventually is nothing but x uh, k minus one. So mathematical things, but bottom line is we are interested about the magnitude, which can be found out from the slope of the one uh, uh, sample to the next one. Okay, so now if you put the slope equation into this one, this equation, then what we are going to get is the h k t minus tau uh, plus tau equal to previous sample that is x k t plus with the uh, slope that is a1, a1 is uh, we already figured out x k t minus x k minus 1 t divided by t. So this is slope into tau. Where? How oh, is within the variety? Okay, so this is the fundamental equation based on which actually we, are, we have to derive the uh, transfer function of the first order of value with the condition, of course. So now, before going into uh, uh, into the derivation, let us just uh, try to depict how we have to actually use uh, the, how we are going to obtain our uh, continuous time signal based on the sample. So arbitrarily say that we have this uh, sample 7 So this is first sample set. And this is your uh, second sample somewhere here. Then you may have your third sample somewhere here, fourth sample somewhere here. So since it will be based on the slope of uh, your signal, so the slope will be actually dictated by this period. So based on this slope, the previous value is zero. So we are starting from actually t equal to zero from here. So previous to so zero and this particular value magnitude that will determine the slope. And then this slope will be given as uh, this will be extended. So our signal will move up to this value uh, following the slope. Then at this particular one, it is getting the next sample value. So it will drop down here, it'll come back here. Now in between these two, we can have our slope. So the slope will determine the value that will continue from here to here. Now again, in this one, you will have your value. Now this is your next slope. So the next slope will take you to somewhere there. Now the next value is here. And this two slope, again, will give you the next uh, length. So bottom line is uh, we are getting a signal something like this. Okay, so this is the outcome of your first order code. So this is how, uh, according to the diagram or figure, this is how to represent the thing. Now the derivation is a bit complicated and uh, the same system can be represented um, as before. Uh, this is your sampler to your continuous time signal, uh, xt, and then xkt is your sequence. Then you have your first order hole. So since the magnitude is uh, not uh, consistent, constant, so we cannot apply that integrator of, uh, assumption. And because of that, uh, we have to uh, uh, use, uh, use xt as a either unit step signal, unit step signal, or unit impulse signal, or unit ramp signal. And based on that, we actually have to figure out what is uh, the transfer function of our first order hold that is H1, H, uh, GH1. Okay, so this is what you have to figure out. So in the book have used uh, unit uh, step signal. So we also follow that unit step signal. And uh, based on the diagram, this is what we have.
so now so say we have a continuous state signal so state signal is your xt and then what we will have our pulses pulse will also have a unit values with each uh, sample period now if we go into our uh, the first one uh, this is your first value this is our second value this is our third value so uh, the first slope will be something like this. So the first value will go into that way, and the next slope will be same, and all the slope will be same. So we will have a signal eventually, something like this. Okay, so let us find out the corresponding Laplace transformation of this one. And then uh, based on that one, we try to figure out what is our GH minus. So let us draw that figure again to make it more clear and based on that, how can we actually uh, find out? So, so this is our say slope. Okay, so actually it has to be starting from one magnitude. Okay, so, so this is this is our slope. And this is our value, and then this continues like this. Actually, different color would have been better. So let me use a different color. So this, this is just for the axis. Okay, now uh, this is your uh, output HT. Now we can say, we can, how can we represent it in the time domain? So HT is represented in this way, one minus, uh, one plus T by T slope, then it is one T uh, minus uh, T minus T divided by T into one T minus T, another uh, step signal minus one. Uh, t minus t. So this 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 equation and this graph is represented by this equation. How this is happening is basically definitely as you can see the first one one t is basically this slope. Uh, one t is uh, something like this one, uh, this value, and uh, uh, t by t that is the slope is uh, giving you this value. So the, this, uh, this one added with this one, uh, this is what we are getting. But what we need from this figure is basically, we need the only the first sample, then we return, then we, we want to have continuous thing like that. So for that, we are subtracting this uh, slope, this uh, incremental slope from this portion. So this portion is represented by this one. So this one is basically this portion. So we are subtracting this one, but still, as you can see, uh, if this is one T, this is actually another T, so it is, it is between two, which is between two. So that is why uh, another one has been subtracted. So if you subtract this one T, eventually we are, we are, what we are getting is uh, this one and then this one. Okay, so try to focus a bit and that thing should be clear to you. Uh, once you have this uh, uh, function, uh, time function, now so next thing is very simple, apply Laplace transformation. And after applying Laplace transformation, uh, what we're going to get is uh, HS as one T is well, basically nothing but uh, one by S step signal and T by T, so T is uh, there. So t has been replaced by one by s square. So we have one by t s square uh, because of this t. So this one is a constant, which is the sampling here. So it is not uh, been included in the Laplace transformation. And so in the next one, what we have is a, a function that this is also constant, so one by t. And we have a delay of uh, t. So e to the power, uh, and also we have a slope of function of t. So this function of t will give us one by s square. Okay, so exponential, and basically the length signal, uh, 
So that will give us uh, one by S square. And because of the delay, it will have e to the power, e to the power minus Ts. Okay, and this is very simple. It's just uh, e to the power minus T. So uh, step signal is one by S, one by S e to the power minus Ts. So now we can see that this one and this one can be taken common and this one and this and some factors are common. So let's take it common. So what we are going to get is S1 minus the minus Ts plus one by Ts square. They give us uh, one minus the minus Ts. So it is the one minus to the minus Ts is common. So one minus to the minus Ts is common. So what we have is Ts square. Here we have Ts plus one. Okay, so this is your Hs, but we are interested about the transfer function. So uh, what we had here is uh, we had x xt and we have x star t. Then we have our transfer function and we have ht. So basically x star t and then we have our hrs. So we already figured out what is hs. So we have to figure out what is x, a, x star s. And based on the x s star s, if you divide it output by input, then it should give you the transfer function uh, or inside, which is uh, has to be your g h one. So we know uh, that our uh, x star t is x star t s. We already figured it out uh, from the impulse sampling. It is basically k equal to zero to infinity or one. Kt to the power minus Kts. Eventually, it is nothing but one by one minus e to the power minus Ts. Okay, so from chapter two, we know that. Now, uh, since we have both of them, so basically gh1, uh, the transfer function of the first order hold is output by input. Actually, then one minus e to the power minus T s uh, into T s plus one divided by T s square divided by one by one minus e to the power minus T s. So one by one, uh, well, one minus e to the power T s will go to the top and it will become one minus e to the power minus T s whole square. Then you have Ts plus one by Ts square. So S square can go inside of the whole square. So one minus to the minus Ts by S whole square, Ts plus one by T. So this is your GH1. So this is your transfer function for the first shorter hole. But as I said, that it is not going to use very frequently unless and otherwise we exp explicitly mention we uh, prefer the zero at order hold and because of the fact that uh, it will take less time to produce the continuous time signal so uh, as the delay increases we know that the delay may make the system unstable so our preferred one is zeroth order hold. And in some rare cases, we may also use the first order hold. So this is first preference. So let me stop this class here. Inshallah, we'll continue with uh, the next topic of this chapter. Uh, next class, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.